Shalawama, peace to all of you. Explaining the scriptures. This channel exists for the sole purpose of helping many examine the scriptures, that is the Bible, in ways that may not have been done before. My wish, my desire is to present to you what many verses truly state throughout the Bible. For example, even with Genesis 1 and 1, it is not as most believe it to be. I will explain many parables, such as Matthew 13 and 24, how it relates to the book of Genesis. I will speak deeply regarding the Ten Commandments, many laws, define words that we must comprehend. In 1 Peter 3 and 15, we are told, Always be ready to give an answer, once again. To give an answer to everyone asking you a reason concerning the expectation. That is the hope that is in you. That is what I wish to do. Give you the reasons why I believe in the scriptures and to show you its words are true. Although, often misunderstood, however, when correctly understood, its truth shines even brighter than before. As the host of this channel, I once pray that I be shown the truth, no matter if I like it or not. And I believe completely that my prayers were answered, therefore, in righteousness. I must share what I have been given. I will do my very best to bring many videos each week. Throughout the weeks and months to come, I will work to keep a focus on each subject at hand. I already have many videos to see. I pray you watch them, like and subscribe to help this channel reach many others. Now I ask that you think of this. If someone asks you to explain the covenant, can you explain confidently? If someone asks you to explain Messiah's three days and three nights, could you explain? Can you truly and clearly define the word God as it is in Hebrew? Most people cannot. This is why some cannot grasp why a person on earth could or would be called God. In this introduction video, I will explain the word God and start with Genesis 1 and 1. In Genesis 1 and 1 we read the word God for the first time. Do you know what the Hebrew texts say in this very first verse? You might be very surprised to learn. There is something different in the Hebrew text as compared to the ten words that we read in the English text. However, before we look into this verse of Genesis 1 and 1, we should first look into the word God. I will quickly explain the word God. So that Genesis 1 and 1 can be the focus, please note that I have another video title. Not God, but Allah Hayama. Allah Hayama is Hebrew for gods. In Hebrew text, as it once was spoken, the word God was pronounced Allah Hayama. This is the plural for God, as in saying gods. There is a singular word in Hebrew for God as well, however. For now we will stay focused on what is in Genesis 1 and 1, the plural. In English text of Genesis 1 and 1 we read, In the beginning, God created the heavens, and the earth. However, in the Hebrew text, the order of words are not the same. Furthermore, the plural for gods is used, that is Allah Hayama. Yes, it is plural. But let it be clear, this plural word is not speaking of many persons creating. In this case, the word gods, or Allah Hayama, is defined or expressed as this. Mighty ones, mightinesses, powers, strengths. Now, there is still more to it, as I stated earlier. In this first verse, the order of words are not the same as in Hebrew to English. Again, in English we read, In the beginning God created. However, in Hebrew text the order of words is this. Still translating to English, In the beginning, created gods, the heavens, and the earth. Yes, you heard it correctly. In the beginning, created. Allah Hayama, the heavens and the earth. The word created comes before the word God in Hebrew texts. As the definition stands, Genesis 1 and 1 is stating, In the beginning, created in many mighty ways the heavens and the earth. However, there is a chance this could also speak of angels being created on the first day, calling them mighty ones as angels were created on the first day. According to the book of Jubilees, angels were created on the first day. For on the first day, he created the heavens, which are above, and the earth, 
and the waters, and all the spirits which serve before him, angels of the presence. I, I said, you are gods, mighty ones, mighty in many ways, and all are sons of the Most High. Please like and subscribe. There is so much more to be explained throughout the scriptures. So many subjects to speak of. Pray to see your comments. Until then, on to the next video. Peace. God. Elohim. Elohim. But in Hebrew, Allah Yama. Explaining the scriptures. In understanding the scriptures, it is vital we understand this Hebrew word, Allah Yama. Without the correct understanding of this word, so many verses and subjects are misunderstood. The Hebrew word, Allah Yama, is not just a word. This word is alive with action and power. We are told He is our Allah Yama, and this is not at all a small thing. The first hieroglyphic in this word was known as an ox head. Today it is known as the Aleph in the Hebrew alphabet. The very first letter in Allah Yama speaks of great power. Therefore, if the first letter speaks of power and might, what does the other letters added to it say or express? The word Allah Yama is always a plural word, and never singular, defined or expressed as strengths, powers, and mightinesses. Each letter of this one word represents many mighty things. So again, to say Allah Yama is like saying a book unto itself, which speaks of many mighty things. If you call the Most High the plural Allah Yama, then you are saying He is mighty in many ways, or even endless ways. There is also a singular word for Allah Yama. The singular Hebrew word for Allah Yama is, Allah. Yes, Allah, is a Hebrew word that is found in Hebrew texts of the scriptures. This is not an Islamic, or Arabic word, but is a Hebrew word. These two words are identified in the Strong's Concordance as H430, for Allah Yama, and H410, for Allah. Allah is defined or expressed as strength, power, might. Remember that I stated it is vital we understand these Hebrew words. Without the correct understanding, there are verses that we cannot correctly understand. Exodus 20 and 5 is one example. In Exodus 20 and 5, in the English translation, we read the word God twice. However, in the Hebrew text of this verse, we read Allah Hayama first, and next, Allah. Look closely at the two translations. Notice the first uses God, and the second, uses Allah Hayama, and Allah. Exodus 20 and 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I the Lord thy God am a jealous God. Exodus 20 and 5. You do not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, Yahawaha your, Allah Hayama, am a jealous, Allah. In the translation using, Allah. As it is in the Hebrew text, stating, Am a jealous Allah, this is what is stated when you use the definition for, Allah. The Most High is telling us, He is jealous in a mighty, or in a great way. Exodus 20 and 5. You do not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, Yahawaha your Allah Hayama, am jealous mightily. Here is one more item to understand. In Psalms 82, where we, the children of Israel are being named gods, in the English translation, what is being stated here is this. I said, You are mighty ones. I said, You are Allah Hayama. Psalms 82 6. I said, You are gods, that is, mighty ones, and all of you are sons of the Most High. Side note Elohim, El, and God are all incorrect words to us, that speak of false Allah Hayama, mighty ones. In the scriptures, people, angels, Things that are idols and the Most High were all called Allah Hayama, to express something about them. Idols are false Allah Hayama, having no life in themselves, and therefore, no strengths, powers, and mightinesses. Praise Yah, for the understanding, He has given us. Hallelujah! 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 Please add comments regarding the subject of this explanation. Also, Please subscribe to this channel to be notified of many other explanations explaining the scriptures. Thank you for your time. Shalawama always.